Would you rather watch a six hour long live arm wrestling video stream or get a hand job by the women's world <laughs> arm wrestling champ, an aggressive hand job by the women's world wrestling <laughs> world arm wrestling champion? <laughs> Up? Um, I'll probably Me? choose the hand job. It'll be done soon, so I don't need to sit for six hours. Yeah, and I can go and draft. Me. <laughs> you, you may it all boils to... down to how fast we can get back to the draft. Sure. Right. I, I mean, I'm, I'll probably go ahead. Go ahead, JT. I was just saying he may have to sit for six hours after, though. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Your purple mushroom. <laughs> I was going to do an in-depth analysis as, uh, of what that would look like. Like, cause arm wrestling, like it's kind of slow. Yep. So is she going to be kind of like slow and gentle or is she going to be like, bam, bam. What are you thinking, Chris? I was, I was getting turned out a little bit when you were doing this. Yeah, I know. I know. Right? I, I, I could tell. That's why I was like, oh, I better stop. He's going to flip and sprout one over there. <laughs> hey, um, just side note. Hey, JT have, uh, has uh, anyone contacted you in the last week about maybe being a voice double for Newman? Uh, I got a couple feelers out there, but uh, I'm still waiting to hear back. Okay. All right. Because this could turn into something big for you, man. Yep. I, I, right, did, uh, I did have a discussion with uh, my mailman today, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bip. So what players have you been drafting over and over? Again, who are you overweight on in your 20 some um, drafts? Player I'm drafting over and over again. Um, so I will talk about players probably in the later round because first nine or 10 rounds, you know, I'm pretty much trying to balance ADP with my liking. For example, I will take Antonio Gibson in first round, but it has to be 1.8 or 1.9 or something to make a you know, grab at him, then do it at 1.2 or 1.3, right? So I'm a pretty much ADP balanced uh, drafter, top nine rounds. But one player who I really like this year, and I don't know why fantasy community has given up on him, is Brian Edwards. He is my highest owned player, both in main events and football guys. And I've been grabbing him somewhere between 16 to 20 rounds. And, and the reason I like him, you know, is when he came out of college last year, he was hurt and fantasy community started taking him in ninth and 12th round. What's happening with Elijah Moore this year, right? And uh, he's a big bodied receiver, position receiver. You know, he can make those contested 50-50 catches and, and has a big catch radius, right? Um, reminds me of Demarius Thomas or, you know, to an extent, he's athletic like Des Bryant. Uh, but, you know, the fantasy community is so much all over Darren Waller and Waller is great. And that offense runs through Waller that people have forgotten some of these uh, younger receivers they have taken. And I just love taking them as a hidden gem. I think he's having a great off season from the reports that are coming out. Waller is a little banged up. I mean, who's going to catch passes on that offense, you know, and Ruggs is the speedy guy and it may be Ruggs. He, but he has the, uh, and so I really like Brian Edwards because when I'm drafting, you know, the later rounds, all I'm looking for is upside players, but not just rookies, right? So he's he's someone who's in most of my teams, you know, and he's a late pick that that I'm getting into. He just so, has uh, John Brown in the on the depth chart as well. Really? He's running out of John Brown now. Yes. Hmm. I saw that right after I had drafted John Brown in my last draft. Yep. And, and the other thing I'm trying to do, and may, I think it will pan out, is I'm also, you know, rugs is not expensive. People are drafting Nicole Hardman and, and those players ahead of rugs. But I'm even trying to see if I can get both rugs and Edwards with the hope one of them evolves as the wide receiver one for that team. Uh, I like that strategy. Um, okay. And the light brigade, and he abused me basically for that offer. Okay. I think I think a second is more than fair. I think you yeah, know, that's, if that's you don't have a shoot owner. I, I don't really think... like him. And so I offered, you know how I trade. I, I offered a second. I'm not going to pay first. I'll wait for a few weeks and then pay a second again. Um, but I really like him. You know, I think he has all the 
you know, the only thing he doesn't have is probably elite speed that can create a lot of separation. But uh, because people may argue that, hey, why does he have to get into the 50-50 contested catches and, and talk about separation? But I think the separation thing is also blown out. You know, if you're a big bodied receiver uh, and you can take 50-50 balls and, or jump balls, you know, I think uh, there's opportunity and and he was very polished coming out of college if you go back and see his tape or or feedback you know he was just hurt he had a foot issue and he came out of college last year and then it was a great receiver class that he was buried in it um, yeah I was all over him last year he was my number one free agent going into week yeah. one you know for a guy that didn't get drafted and you know yeah. some a lot of the early drafts and then he made a lot of noise in camp a lot of buzz similar to what he's doing now but yeah, I remember spending like 40% of my fab budget where I really needed, you know, like an alpha dog receiver. Yep. And I was was able to get him. But, you know, same thing. He just couldn't stay healthy. I would love to see an analysis of second year players because, you know, we all get hyped on the rookies. But yep. it seems like year after year, you know, second year guys that are dismissed because we're all hot on the rookies this year, yep. you know, pop and do things. I remember drafting stuff on digs on my first dynasty league, you know. I think I got him like in the ninth round of, you know, the startup draft yep. in his second year. Yep. Yeah. And, I, I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Dip. No, I was saying the other interesting thing, Chris, you can look at the stat. What I have observed is sometimes when rookies perform well, they actually regress in second year, but I've seen the opposite happen with rookies who have not done well in first year and, and they evolve in second year, you know, with receivers. I, I don't know why it happens, but that's the interesting thing I've noticed. Uh, so well, based on that analysis, are, are you even higher than you were last year on Eno Benjamin now? Who is Eno Benjamin? <laughs> <laughs> that's, is, is that Calvin's um, relative, Eno Benjamin? Calvin's? You know what? I, I liked Eno too, and he just popped up in the news the other day. He's got a very weak depth chart in front of him. I'm not saying he's going to be, you know, Tommy Trumbull or anything, but oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but the point is, you know, that's a wrong comparison to make because Eno is a running back, and I, you know, the rookie, the the running back and wide receiver evolution is totally different. I think you know the running backs if they can't make an impression early in their career, you know, especially in first year. Um, it is concerning. Now, there are exceptions, right? Melvin Gordon sucked year one, but he evolved in year two. But then on the flip side, you look at players like Bishop Sankey and Monty Ball, you know, they never evolved, you know. Uh, but oh my with, God. But with receivers, to my mouth a I think it's, it's, it's different, you know. And so, um, and, uh, you know, I really like Brian Edwards. And it's good. You guys don't need to draft him and just let him fall to me and I'll take him. He's did not going to be did, falling too far. Did, did June Wasp get him in that main event? That um, yes, you did? we did. We we did. I like you know, I like that team quite a bit. I like Kel I like the Kelsey, Clyde, Mahomes, and you even got Butker. I mean, you got four Chiefs. You're going with every yeah. week. I mean, I didn't want Mahomes that high, but no, I know you didn't. You know, in the, know. but Wasp couldn't resist. Oh, the God, stack. Was... I think the stack thing sometimes is overblown, right? You'll see some good players. Yeah, I do it. Um, I, I just like it. You, it's it's fairly unique. I mean, you have but, four. But sets. whenever you have Kelsey and Mahomes, and if they are playing all the games healthy, you are in playoff contention. That's that's the thing with them, I, you know. So yeah, I mean, I look at it this way. Okay, you got you got Kelsey Mahomes, so you're going to get a lot of the passing touchdowns, passing yards. Yep. You got Clyde. If Clyde has a great year, you're going to get the yep. rushing, probably some um, some PPR touchdowns, and then. If they get in the red zone and they don't get the touchdown, you're probably getting the points off of Butker. I mean, yeah. I thought that was pretty brilliant, actually. I don't, uh, I won't say that about you and Wasp very often, but yeah, I, I, uh, no, I, I liked it. I liked it quite funny a bit. You like it, you know. Wasp likes kickers early. That was his logic. I didn't want Butker there because I thought like a Tyler Bass will come back, and I'm okay with it in a high scoring offense. I really wanted Nico Collins there, and he wouldn't. Take uh, Collins see, there, and Collins didn't come back. Uh, see, I thought I thought you guys would have take would have opted for uh, Young Ho. I know you. Yeah, well, well, one of those, right? Whether Young <laughs> Ho or 
Zurline oh, or or Bass or Saka or Saka. But not Tucker. Oh, You're not not Tucker. Yeah, Tucker too. But hey, I, hey, I hey, Tucker wouldn't come back. Do you do you know what Justin calls his mother? Mother Tucker. All right, <laughs> that is the last. Hey, that's a dad discussion. joke. That's a dad that's, joke right there. Thank you. The last kicker discussion and the last <laughs> kicker joke we should oh, ever have. Oh, whatever. Hey, whatever. Kicker mother, life, whatever. Mother kicker Tucker. lives matter. You are going to hurt someone on a FPC. Well, right, that, please, that, just, but, that just killed but, Zeb's corner. I was going to talk kickers, but go ahead. <laughs> All right, Beb, what players are you avoiding? Um, players I'm avoiding, well, there's a lot, but few I will tell you. Early, Give me some early round guys. Yep, early round guys. No Mike Davis, no Miles Gaskin. I want someone else to take them, right? Um, so no on those two guys, you know, from a running back standpoint, even if I go zero RB, I'm, I'm not uh, taking them. Um, I'm trying to avoid uh, Chris Godwin if I can, you know, again, it, it depends where I find him. I, I do like Mike Evans because of the touchdown chemistry he has with uh, Brady, but I don't like Chris Godwin this year uh, with Antonio Brown having a full off season and you know, some healthy tight ends. I just don't know how that offense will play out, right? And then I'm a never, never Amari Cooper. I'm, I just don't want to draft him. Now, if I'm sharing a team, someone likes him, uh, great. Even on that eight finish team, Amari Cooper didn't show up in playoffs. If he had <laughs> shown up in playoffs, it would have helped, right? I remember you, I remember you cussing him out last year. Uh, yeah, Bip, and, does, uh, Bip never and, cusses. Yeah, and two years before, if you remember, Cooper started horribly, and so I benched him. And when I benched him, he had that 213 yards, six catches, three oh, touchdowns. Yes, yes. I lost against Kansas game. City. Can you remember? So, so, against Kansas City, right? Yeah, Kansas City. So he's one of those guys. I, I played him six games, and he didn't. Seventh game, I bench him, and he does that. And eighth game, I play him again, two catches, 28 yards, right? So... He's someone I don't trust at all. So, yeah, I, so that that interesting um, that you brought up that 213 yard game because I I remember weren't you partners with someone yep, on that yep, league? Yep. So it, it was a Thursday night game. Yep. And I'm sitting here watching the game and I just I was started texting getting, you. Oh yeah. yeah, you're like oh my I can't even repeat that. I mean I wish I would have saved them knowing that we were going to do this. But oh my god, you were you were so pissed off. And I was like, well that's why I don't partner, man, you know? Cuz but, but you know you was... didn't I thought you wanted to start him. The other guy didn't. Yeah, the other guy didn't, but Correct? it's a team decision. Once a decision <laughs> is made. And you know, I'm pretty compromising that that way. And you know, that was the first year I played I think main event, so obviously mm -hmm. it hurts. You learn from it, but then since then you know, I'm more emotionally stable, and that's why you do so many teams. Some something will stick out. <laughs> yeah, you have to you have to stay detached to an extent, or this hobby will just kill wait, you. Wait, 